Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Star Fox 64. In the last part, we took on through Path 3, taking care of Aquas and Zonas, and now we're gonna go finish off Path 3's unique levels, at least, by heading into Sector Z. I really like this level. The enemy army is gunning for you. Be careful. Don't worry, sir. Good luck. Enemy approaching from the left. We'll gladly take this one. Sector Z is a relatively straightforward level, it's just an enemy rushing in all range mode mission. It's another dogfight essentially, though notably this stage does have something unique to it in that if any of your partners run out of HP, they will actively flee into the Great Fox's rear hangar because it's the only stage that the Great Fox is an active participant in. Which, you know what? I like. Now, the mission accomplished versus complete for this stage can honestly be kinda troubling because it takes some pretty precise firing, and if you came here from anywhere that isn't Zone S, it's only gonna be harder. And if you mess up and get the mission complete here, you're getting the bad ending for the game because that's gonna send you all the way to the Bulls Outpost instead of going to Area 6. Thankfully, it doesn't take too long for the actual mission to show itself, as it only takes maybe about a minute and a half after the stage actually starts. With that said, if you're going for the medal in this stage, you need to get only 100 hits, which is not too many. Just farm down every enemy you can. Coming from the, the problem with getting the medal comes into the fact with the missiles that this stage's main gimmick is. There are going to be five of them heading from the southern part of the map towards the Great Fox. If even one of them hits, you get the mission complete rather than the mission accomplished. Where you take them out, spam fire at them, and also use your bombs. With that said, since there's five of them that each give you ten points, getting the medal means you only need to kill fifty enemies while you're waiting for the missiles to show up. This can be troublesome to get the mission accomplished in, so don't be surprised if you don't get it. My main strategy is to stay towards the bottom side of the map and just kind of patrol left and right back and forth. Just be careful you don't automatically get thrown back into the ring because they send you in at kind of a 45 degree angle and that makes turning kind of awkward. They always show up from there, so just stay safe and try your best to do it. Two and three approaching. Doesn't help that they also start spamming you with more than one missile at once. Uh, I believe it goes Missile 1, then missile two, missile 2 and 3, and then Missile 4 and 5. So, uh, it can be a little troublesome. Do your own backflips and, uh, somersaults and hopefully you'll take care of this within good enough phase. That should not be me doing a somersault. They're really picky on where the bottom edge of the map is, clearly. And focus all your fire on one missile at once, and then focus on the next one. Don't try to spread your fire between them all at the time. Oh no! Are you gonna hug all the fun? Cat, can't you go bother someone else? Let me help you out. With that said, if you came here from Zonus, you at least get the extra benefit during the last missile phase of Cat helping you out. With that said, if you didn't come from Zonus, you're on your own. Notably, though, if you went to uh, Katina, no, not Katina, Macbeth from Zonus, Cat also helps you out in that stage like Bill does in either Solar or Sector X. In particular, she helps you shoot some of the switches like Falco does. So if anything, if you want to get the uh, easier route into Path 3, honestly, I would recommend, or into the uh, true ending, I would recommend going along Path 3 through Aquas, get to Zonus, screw up, get the mission complete, and then do the mission accomplished on Macbeth through her method. These last missile volleys are the worst because I think we actually do have to deal with three. I think it is six missiles, not five. Yeah, that's three. Use a smart ball if you have to because that does a lot of damage to them. Beautiful. I could kiss you for that. You owe me, Falcon. 
you're on your own. Good luck, little man. Rob, is everything okay? Great Fox is okay. That was a close call. We've got the bad guys on the run. Don't worry. What's he's here? Hooray? I guess you didn't have anything very relevant to say, did you, Slippy? Eh, oh well. That's... Uh, Sector Z's accomplished ending, which admittedly is a very satisfying mission to pull off, but it can be really tricky because the missiles... There's not as much space between them and the Great Fox from their spawn point as it feels like there is based on how it is on the map. They move very fast towards the Great Fox. To the point where I'd argue it's easy to get the uh, mission complete ending here. Thankfully, it's a relatively straightforward idea. You just let the missile run into it. With that said, I forget exactly how long it takes. Let's see, we're at about six and a half minutes into the video now. Based off how long it looks like it takes, it maybe takes a minute and a half for them to reach, at least from the initial missile show up in cutscene. I want to say the later missile volleys might even move a little faster, but don't quote me on that. Thankfully, they do mark them on the map, unlike, uh... No, actually, no, Star Fox Assault does that in that stages, in that game's missile stage as well. It's just that there's more missiles and they come from more than one direction, which is troubling. With that said, you're also not likely to fail the first missile because there's only the one. Uh, and between Falco and maybe probably Peppy trying to shoot that down as well, it'll go down pretty quickly. It's when there's two missiles that it becomes very easy for the Great Fox to be shot down. Alright, so now we're at 7.20 and the second volley is showing up based off when the cutscene audio looks like it starts. Yeah, maybe it takes 40 seconds for them to reach from spawn then. I completely forgot we destroyed the first missile. So, yeah, that's not a lot of time. In case you heard a cut in the audio there, by the way, I'm trying out a new method for the actual commentary because for some reason my most up-to-date version of my editing software's noise removal feature doesn't seem to work quite right. So I'm using the old one to do that and that requires me doing some syncing. But yeah, uh, this mission can be a little easy to lose and it takes about 40 seconds from the reach, so be careful. This is really starting to tick me off! Rob, is everything okay? Damage to rear left section of the ship. Dang, now they've done it! It could be difficult to attack Venom. Doggone it! The biggest point towards getting the accomplished here, I would say, really is just spamming smart bombs, because they do good amounts of damage to each of the missiles. Just only use them when there's two or three of them, because using them on the one missile at the start of the mission, kind of a waste, honestly. And failing then, getting the mission complete, takes us, as I mentioned, over to the Bulls Outpost towards the end of Path 1, thus meaning you're getting the bad ending for the game, so to speak. So with that, let's now head back to the main footage and take out the true penultimate stage, Area 6. It's almost over. We're in your debt. Come back in one piece, Fox. Will do, General. Good luck. Came in here. No problems. Do you copy? Emergency maneuvers! Too late. Game over, pal. And 
entering Venom Air Defense Zone. Everybody stay alert! Area 6 is easily the most enemy-filled stage in the game to the point where I actually misspoke last part. Zonus doesn't have the highest metal tally. This one does. In order to get a medal here in Area 6, you need to get 300 kills, which is not easy. With that said, it's a relatively straightforward level. We're gonna have a lot of outposts that are shooting at us, and you can even shoot down most of them, be it the actual battleships you're seeing, these weird spinning Beyblades. Although they take a lot of punishment to actually do that with. More so than I'd argue, most things that take the mashing from the Landmaster. Shoot down every enemy you see because, hey, they might have something for you, or just in general. With that said, I'd also recommend using any smart bombs you have in this stage. Because I genuinely feel like they don't come in handy during the true final version of Venom. Also, at certain points in the stage, Rob will communicate with you, and instead of him sending you supplies, the Great Fox itself will actually shoot down enemies. With that said, if you're going for uh, the medal, I think that does take away points from you, and that, I mean, there's potential ones you've lost, so maybe don't do that. Did we get him? Not yet, sir! We also get a little bit of a unique thing where the boss of the stage actively talks with some allies alongside us trying to get to him. I don't know why more stages didn't do that because it actually makes us feel like we're in the middle of a sci-fi climax. There's me, don't you mistake it, Andros. Well, there's certainly enough for your squadrons and we're taking them out. Agreed, I actually like the final two stages of this game quite a bit. And I feel like they throw a lot of the enemies at you in this final level. Like, more or less every Androssian fleet enemy we've seen throughout the stages, you'll see here that's not a boss fight. They've broken through the first line! There's a couple that aren't here, like I want to see some of the ones from Meteo aren't here, and by and large any organic enemies aren't here. But this is really neat, although now it makes me wonder what the hell a Star Fox boss rush would feel like, and that feels like a weird sentence to think about. I don't like that idea. We're gonna break through that fleet. Step through the second line! No, in order to take out these larger battleships, you need to pull a Star Wars, I forget which movie that is, and shoot at the actual command center. Fire! Fire! Don't let them go! The bodies of them aren't actually vulnerable to damage. It's just where the uh, HQ, the command center, is at the very peak of that little head picking out of the top, really. With that said, while I like this stage, my biggest problem with it comes in with its boss fight. Because this is one of my least favorite bosses in the game. Not because it's really hard, but because this boss fight just takes forever. It's the next, like... Barring the cutscene portions, maybe two and a half minutes of the video, and that's a long fight. The last line has been free. These guys crazy. Dang! Deploy it now. Enemy ahead. This one's different. Crush! We were so close to Venom. Boss for this stage is the Gorgon, which is this multifaceted sphere. When it opens up, the things you need to shoot are the little glowing orbs, and then shoot at the core. Sort of. You can only shoot at the core after doing the orbs three times. After you've destroyed the orbs, it, the center changes color, and it'll phase in and out of the reality, either shooting its little claw arms at you, which you need to destroy to accelerate to the next phase, as well as shooting waves of missiles at you. The missiles can be easily taken out just by using a charge shot or firing mass mashing. But this fight can take a while because the teleporting especially takes... I feel like longer than it should have. Instead of like maybe doing like a flash and it's somewhere else, it actively does this little wavy animation which looks cool for the era, but eh. The... Opening portion of the ship does eventually close, so you need to mash through getting those orbs taken out. And I want to say... Smart Bombs might be good for that. Smart Bombs, I honestly feel, are better for the missiles and the arms than the actual orbs, though. Because the arms are relatively hard to avoid, I feel. They're re really good on tracking into you. 
like, you can avoid them as we just saw that second one there, but it feels like sometimes they hit you when they really shouldn't, and sometimes you just forget to move, and then you just take dumb shots. Once we get to the core being red, it no longer does the orbs the same way. It now does a giant laser beam that homes in on you. The way I think you have to avoid this is by constantly using your boost to get out of the way, but I'm really bad at avoiding it. I don't think I've ever successfully avoided it. Once the core is red, we get one more volley of the balls, and at that point, you can just spam fire into the core to do some actual damage. Whether or not you kill it, though, is up to your mashing, as we'll clearly see, because uh, I think I barely make it. With that, though, and us completing Area 6, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in Part 8, we're going after the true ending and Andros once and for all, for this game at least. See you guys, then.